I got to start doing real grappling and real jujitsu. And I started training with jujitsu schools and stuff like that. And I did one more amateur fight, a spinning back kick to the liver. I knocked this kid out in my fourth amateur fight. And then I went pro because the rules in PA, shin guards, mm. big, huge, puffy gloves, two minute rounds. Mm. What the hell are you supposed to do as a striker with two minutes? You're a wrestler. You get one takedown, you won the round. That's yeah. it. So when I turned pro, I was like, okay, I'll do one pro fight just to say I was a pro athlete, you know, just to say <laughs> that I did it. Honest to God, that's why I did it. I was like, I'm going to go back to acting. And I was still doing professional shows in between getting ready for fights. Won the fight, flying me, TKO the dude. They took him out on a stretcher. It was for CFFC. They had to stop the show because they only had one ambulance. Oh, wow. So the ambulance had to take the guy, and shout out to him, Toomey Goodrum, you're still the man, but they took him out, and uh, they had to wait for the ambulance to come back. So I'd, <sighs> I'd stopped the show in my first uh, <laughs> wow, my first pro fight. One yeah. ambulance? And it, it took him out on the, yeah, they took him out on the stretcher. No, but I mean, so, one ambulance. One ambulance, yeah, crazy. and they never did that again. Yeah. They never did that again. <laughs> I, you know, if anything, I, I show them you need to have two ambulances at these things. So you get some fights in some small organizations. Yeah. And then how old? Mainly, mainly Cage Fury, who, uh, you know, thank God that's, that's kind of who I stumbled upon. So I was already kind of with one of the better regional promotions to begin with. I lucked out with that. I fought in Pittsburgh, I think, once or twice. And then, um, yeah, and I fought for CFFC. And how many fights did you have before you got into the UFC? I was eight no. I was eight no when I got when I got signed. I uh, I think I had like six knockouts, a bunch in the first round, and that's when I started putting the acting like way on the on the back burner. I was like, wow, I, I might actually be able to get into the UFC. It was that that was never. I mean, never the goal was was to get in the UFC from the beginning. But then once I started winning, I always trained my ass off, you know, j just like I am with triathlon or with ev whether it be acting, whether it be fighting, commentary. Like, I'm trying to put myself into it. And uh, it, the wind started coming, and then I remember I knocked out um, this kid in, in um, Atlantic City in my last fight with CFFC, a spinning hook kick to the – yeah, this is this is yeah. it. Bam. Oh, and look, I, I got more damage from the ref throwing me into the into the cage than I did in that whole fight. What did you weigh here? That's one fifty five. I was just smaller. <clears throat> you know, years, Shredded. dude. Think about year, like you know how it is. Yeah. The, the years and years of you doing strength and conditioning and you building up those muscles and your bones get denser and stuff yeah. like that. So I mean, by the time I got to the UFC, plus the lightweights were so big i remember thinking like i have to be I have to be bigger than these guys and i had mm. this complex that i had to weigh so much so i'd go and get so fat in between fights and i'm t that's one regret i have looking back i would have stayed leaner and in better shape all year round and not done the drastic weight cuts that i did um is that like the thing that you worry the most about we were talking about that earlier well i know for sure that i've hurt my kidneys uh to the point where even after fights, like I've had rhabdo after mm. the Dan Hooker fight, I was like peeing Coca Cola, Ugh. and they made me stay in the hospital for <clears throat> like uh, an extra day or two to monitor my kidneys. I almost Ugh. had, um, I almost had compartment syndrome from that fight. They were going to have to slice my calf open. I've obviously lost a piece of my lung in the James Vick fight. Um, How'd that happen? The end of the fight, he knees me, and it pushed in my rib cage. A lot of people thought my rib cage broke. It didn't. Nothing broke. But I had a they call it like a bleb on your lung that you would know you would only know about if somebody went in there or something happened to it. So it's like a bubble that naturally forms on your lungs and it's it's okay unless something hits it. Well, that knee just so happened to hit right on that spot and it just so happened that I had this thing on my lung and it burst. Whoa. So it, it collapsed my lung. And since it collapsed, that part of my lung was then damaged. And it would normally, if you like fall really hard doing snowboarding or something like that, or if, you know, if you're rock climbing, you fall and you land on your, your ribs, you can, you can puncture them by breaking your ribs or you can just, the impact can kind of almost like blow it out. And a lot of times they'll go back on their own. Like they'll, they'll reinflate. Your, your lungs will kind of heal themselves. 
or they put they call it like a pigtail or something they inserted this this tube down into my lung which was like a vacuum it would suck the air around my lung and my chest wall out forcing the lung to go back around where it was supposed to and that wouldn't work so like three days went by they did that for a couple of days wouldn't work and then finally the surgeons came in they're like we're gonna have to go in find where the bleb was cut it out staple your lung shut and then adhere your lung to your chest wall so my left lung is attached to my the inside of my chest wall <clears throat> like an elephant apparently elephants they're their lungs are actually atta attached to the inside of their chest wall. So this lung, like if you stab me here, and it, like I, it would never fully collapse again. Wow! I'm like a superhero Does on the side. Does it change the way? <laughs> Except for the inch that I'm move? missing from it. Does it change the way your body moves? Do you feel it? No, I, I will get a cramp every now and then in the surgery area that they have. I still have a scar. It goes right mm. across, like like Jesus, like where they. Mm. It's like right along here. Wow, that was miserable, dude. That and that was one, that's one of the many things. I know we kind of went on a tangent, but retirement was like I can't. You I broke just, your I, forearm in the Mike Perry I broke fight. Broke my forearm in that one. You guys called that one nice. You could yeah. tell by the way I was I was holding my hand funny, and I remember in, in between rounds going like this, and I could feel the bones crunching together on the side. And I told that's Duke, so I was like, he's like, I know, baby, I know. It's so know. common with those spinning back fists. Yeah. So common, you hit, hit and then the you know forehead. what's dumber is throwing it like eight more times in the same <laughs> fight. And I remember you and I think it was you and Dom, like, oh god, <laughs> stop throwing that arm! How but many it's people instinctual. have done that? So many people have shattered their forearm. Dom, Dom had done that in training, really, which is why when he's calling with you, he's he's going, oh, because he knows exactly yeah. what it feels like. Yeah, stupid man. Yeah, spinning back fist and catching that forearm to the forehead. Right on so the forearm. Common. Just snaps it in half. I, I mean, it's it, such a, obviously, Your forehead vulnerable. is freaking dense. Yeah, you get that. You get a lot of breaks from uh, checking kicks incorrectly or yeah. blocking kicks incorrectly. I love that. You know what I regret never getting injury-wise? I know it sounds silly to say, but the slices on the shin that you see all these guys getting <laughs> from checking kicks and your shin is just like <clears throat> pouring blood.